Hey guys, uh, Chopadong here. Happy Friday to you. We're back. MLB is back. And I'm here to bring you MLB Made Easy. The fastest, simplest system that gets you on the right track for the right plays in MLB DFS that you've ever seen. So let's plug in. Let's get ready to go. I'll show you a little bonus tool here today. But as usual, follow me out there on social media at Chopadong. And you can always find me inside the VIP rooms at DFSArmy.com. One-stop shopping all things daily fantasy sports from MMA to PGA to MLB to whatever sport you play. We cover them all with cheat sheets, content, tools, everything to help you get the fundamentals in place to become a better DFS player. We've got six guys over $100,000 in winnings this year. We've got uh, a lot more on the way as NFL kicks in. We've got a new season pass that you can look for on the website if you play NFL only and it's it, it's your thing and you're getting rocking and ready to to roll into September and whatnot as the dog days of summer kick in because honestly baseball is a little harder in the second half than it is in the first half in a lot of cases because people start shifting to football so it leaves only the diehard baseball people left uh, also pricing gets tight as we know prices go up way faster than they come down so it starts getting harder to find some of that value and of course baseball is always a volatile sport all of that mixes together and makes it a little bit harder as the season goes on so let's for the next month or so let's kind of bear that in mind and let's try to keep winning and get on the winning track and teach the fundamentals that are going to make you a stronger baseball player that's what I do so Easiest way to do it is we start with the routine again. And I will tell you this, when we get to the hot hitters section, take it with a grain of salt for a couple of days because they've had a few days off. And it's almost like the beginning of the season all over again in that the sample sizes of seven days and 14 days and whatever aren't exactly current because you don't know how somebody's going to come back off of a layoff. These were the guys that were hot rolling into the all-star break, but they might come out of the gate cold. So bear that in mind as we talk about those numbers, but we're going to show them to you anyway. The first thing that I start with is, of course, the FanDuel Pitchers page in our research station, and I sort that top that shop, shop from top to bottom, and I bring the bigger strikeout matchups to the top. And I'm looking at McCullers, Robbie Ray, Tyler Molly, Haney, Morton, Gaussman, those types of guys today. Anything over 500 is pretty good, but I'm looking at a combination of the price and what I might be giving up in terms of a strikeout matchup. McCullers on paper has the best strikeout matchup when you combine his strikeout stuff with the team he's facing, strikeout potential, that looks like a good matchup. You don't give up too much for a Robbie Ray, but the price is the same on FanDuel from 97 to 9800 And you, you can do this process on DraftKings too. But you drop a 1000 bucks to Tyler Miley, and you don't give up a whole lot of that K score. Eight points, that's pretty negligible. So you might want to save the 1000 bucks. Andrew Haney, same bit. But when I look at the 562 for Molly and the 543 for Haney, I don't want to give up that 20 points in Haney's number over Molly for no price savings, no salary savings. So I'd probably stick with Molly in that case. And same with Charlie Morton. It's even a little bit worse at 540 all the way down from 562. So these guys, while they're the same in price point, I'm going to look for the higher K-score guy. Again, it's not a significant difference, but it is a little bit. It does show up on paper, and it tells me that Tyler Molly might have the matchup of those guys. I look at a Kevin Gaussman at 10-6, and while he might be a popular pick, he's got the lowest K-score of those top five or six guys, and he's $1,000, $2,000 more in salary. I don't want to sacrifice that strikeout potential tonight for the savings or, you know, the lack of savings. And what I end up doing, I wouldn't be surprised if Gaussman has a great night. So this methodology is not perfect. But what you're going to find out is that more often than not, it does point you to perhaps one of the better value pitchers with a strong matchup. Somebody else on lower on this list might pop off. Nothing's saying that they won't. We're just looking typically for these guys. We can count on them having pretty strong nights. And we're just looking for which of these high K-score numbers can we get the best savings for. And that's how I treat my 100-man leagues, single-entry GPPs, et cetera, et cetera. For a cash game, I'm going to look at an ownership report, and I'm pretty much just going to eat the chalk at pitcher, especially if it's a significant difference, which it might not be when I show you the chalkboard here in a minute. Because I've had a couple of guys asking about single-entry um, GPP videos. And we'll do one of those later today, but we're going to let some things filter in. And we're just going to get this out first because this is the first thing I do every day when I look at a baseball slate. I just want to get 
the same. It's like getting up in the morning and doing your jumping jacks or doing your exercises or eating, drinking your coffee or whatever. You kind of feel a little bit naked if you don't go through that first routine. This helps me get an eyeball on the slate and look at what I might want to expect later. These things may change in a few hours, but I'm going to at least start here and form my opinions based off of this. The next thing that I do is I sort that W score largest to smallest, and now I'm looking for stacks. I'm looking for the opposing bats going up against these pitchers. And Madison Bumgarner, Sensatella, Jordan Lyles, Morgan, Aiken, Hauser, German, whatever. These are guys I'm looking to target. I like seeing them when they're cheaper pitchers because generally speaking, the pricing algorithms have it right, and your cheaper pitchers are generally the ones that get torched. And we want to target those, and it doesn't have to be more complicated than that. So I use a number like a W score because that is WOBA centric, and it tells me which pitchers are struggling. They're giving up a high WOBA against themselves. They're having trouble getting guys out. And they're facing an offense that tends to have a good WOBA as an offense. And so those two combine and give me that W score, which tells me that these are the stacks I want to focus on because these are good offenses typically facing bad pitching. And that's obviously a good situation to be in. So when I scroll over here to the left, I'm looking at Cubs, Dodgers, uh, Blue Jays, Athletics, Royals, um, you know, Reds, whatever. I'm looking at these teams and then I'm going to consult ownerships or I'm going to consult some of the hotter hitters, or I'm going to consult some of these other things and see how much I like these teams and where I might rank them, where I might order them in terms of what I might prioritize as a hitting stack today, because it might be, you know, Boston, who's a little bit down the list in terms of W score. They're definitely worth targeting, though, because they are in a good WOBA matchup with their pitcher. But, you know, if a team like Kansas City or the Chicago Cubs or whatever just ain't getting it done, then I'm going to probably be, even though they've got a great matchup, I'll probably be a little lower in my exposure on a team like that. And I would encourage you to start formula, you know, putting together some form, of a, some form of a formula that will do that for you, that will start showing you how to kind of rate and rank those teams according to what you think might happen, because that's what's going to separate you from everybody else out there in, you know, lemming land. And you're going to want to be different if you're going to want to win GPPs. When I go to the hot hitters tab, I come over here and I sort off. This is Woba uh, last seven days, 400 or greater, and ISO of 200 or greater. I use those numbers as a benchmark. If you want to shorten the list beyond that, because it's a pretty big list, you're going to want to go to 420, 425, 450. You might take ISO to 220 to 250, whatever. And I'm sorry, it is point, point 400. Point 0.425, whatever number you use, because it's just like a batting average. It needs that decimal point in front of it. We've had some confusion where I haven't been clear before, and I just want to at least state that so that you guys can put those numbers into the research tool yourself. And now all you're going to do when you've got that list the way that you want it, you're going to want to tighten it up probably beyond that. But I don't know how much that's going to be up to you. You take that team A to Z, you got Atlanta bats, Baltimore bats, Boston, Chicago, Cleveland. A lot of Cleveland bats were hot rolling into the break. Uh, Detroit, Dodgers, Minnesota, Mets, Oakland, and then some onesies and twosies down there a little bit lower in the alphabet. So we're going to want to see some of these situations. Like if we see all of this Cleveland, we might go back to the pitchers tab and see where does Cleveland rank on this list. Pretty far down here to the bottom, Bassett's not a bad pitcher. Maybe they tear him up, maybe they don't. It's obviously a rocky situation. It's a risk. It's a gamble. And therefore, it's a GPP-only type of offense. I wouldn't be considering very many of those guys in any kind of a cash game scenario whatsoever. But they are there. And you can argue that they're hot batters. And hot batters can hit any pitcher. And whatever you want to say, that might work for you. But I would save it for more of a tournament type of play. So you've seen the pitching. And you've seen the stacks. And you've seen the hot hitters. And how to find those. How to get those numbers. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at those ownership reports and we're going to look for what can we find in terms of chalk pitching. I'm going to kick over to FanDuel because we've got a lot of uh, DraftKings coverage already. So I'm going to focus more on the FanDuel side of things. And I see a Tyler Miley. And there I said pitching oftentimes just eat the chalk. But the difference between 21.7 and 20.2 and 19.5% is not much. So you may want the savings of a Morton or a Molly. You may want the strikeout potential of a Robbie Ray. You may want the, the weaker offense or the, the, the matchup 
in somebody like a Robbie Ray and that want, that makes you want to spend up, it's okay. All three of those guys are probably cash considerable, if you will, because they're all going to carry significant chunks of ownership. Somebody like a Gaussman or a Bassett or a Paddock will not. These guys should probably not be your cash game pitchers today unless you have overwhelming evidence telling you they're the best and safest pitcher on the slate. I tend to hide within the chalk. I look for significant differences in the chalk. And this, you're not going to get a lot of leverage using a Morton over a Miley or a Ray over a Miley or somebody like that in your tournaments and such because everybody's going to have pretty much equal percentages of those guys. What you're looking for in a tournament, a single entry or a three max build, is you want to start your foundation with your cash lineups. You want, And the way you're going to look at these cash lineups is very simple. We've shown techniques for the domination station optimizer where you can get into the, the ownership slider bar and trick the machine into giving you chalky lineups, and that works, and it works very well, very well for cash. And I'll show my VIPs that a little bit later. But when it comes to the chalkboard itself, today we're going to use this in terms of maybe finding where the key pieces on the slate are going to go. And automatically, I see a lot of Dodgers on the tops of these lists. So Dodgers are going to be important today. In a cash game on a big 15-game slate, I'm not using three or four Dodgers. I'm probably limiting it to two but I'll probably have a couple. Well, which couple are, are the most important? To me, it's not usually in the outfield, because especially when they're pricey, because I can use the outfield to find my value bats, right? The sensible value bats that help me afford expensive pitching, because there's usually not a large discrepancy in the ownership over here in the outfield. I'm looking more for positional scarcity, if you remember that uh, terminology from NFL days and whatever else where we might use a tight end that is you know projected really 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 well we might even pay up for a tight end because the positional scarcity is there or you know a center in basketball or something where there just are not a lot of options at that position and we're kind of pigeonholed into needing one of those positions by roster requirements and we have to use a guy and we kind of have to pay up for him because everybody else is really really a secondary option um, if not even just a punt play and we don't necessarily want to do that we want to generate points out of those positions so outfield usually gives me that value and so I can usually focus on positional scarcity in the specific positions so if I'm looking at catcher catcher and first base are combined I see a couple of 23 percent in Muncie and Will Smith Muncie also qualifies as a second baseman because of the positional gap here if I don't if I don't need the money for a Cronenworth or something I might take a Muncie at second base and then Will Smith might slide in here to catch her in first base because, again, look at the gap in the ownership here from a 23% all the way down to 8%. That means Muncie's probably pretty damned important. But I can also use a Will Smith. Salvador Perez is probably giving up a little bit of ownership, so a Muncie or a Will Smith is probably the play there in a cash game, although these other guys you could certainly make arguments for. Don't get me wrong. I'm looking probably for that big ownership gap. And I come down here and it's a little bit more spaced out. So maybe again, I would use a Muncie down here at first base and maybe I would use a Cronenworth or, you know, somebody like a, a, a Odor or somebody as a punt play here at second base because they're going to carry some ownership. But it's very, very Dodgers heavy. Turner at second, at third base, maybe. It's not a big drop off to a Chris Bryant. It's, it's not even a huge drop off to a Machado. So if you wanted to use some San Diego, that might make sense. Uh, Fernando Tatis is definitely a big drop off from 30% down to 10%. So he's probably a core piece. Even at that price, he's probably a core piece. So you're looking kind of at a couple of Dodgers, like a Will Smith, a Max Muncie um, type. And then you're looking, pitchers are pretty even today. You're looking at a very, very important piece in Fernando Tatis. And then you might come up here in the outfield, look for some of those value plays. But if you've, you, if you've taken a value play like a Cronenworth or somebody along those lines, you, might, you may not need Tommy Pham. Maybe you like Tommy Pham more than Cronenworth, I don't know. But you may not need a Will Myers. You may not need those types of guys. So you may be sitting on a Bellinger. And that's where you're just going to eat some chalk and hide within that number. This is how we're going to do it. And then we're going to look for a pivot. A sensible pivot might be getting off those Dodgers and ignoring them completely and taking more Padres. It's a slight pivot, but it's a pivot all the same. And we'll strategize more on that later today for our VIPs. So if you're going to consider becoming a VIP and getting the coaching, you need to hop in to dfsarmy.com. Use the coupon code in the description of the video. Like and subscribe it while you're down there. And let's get the second half up and running. Let's get the second half rolling and let's turn you into a better fantasy baseball player by talking to us day in and day out until you get the leaks in your game plug and we turn you into one of those army hats that you always find on the top of the leaderboards. 
Chop it on Friday. Baseball's back. Love talking to you guys, and we'll talk to you real soon. Peace out, homies.